Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Bob JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And here we are again. It is Monday, June the 14th, 2021. My name is Clyde J. Kell, and this is the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 101. You know, last week was our uh, opening night for our exhibition, which is still going on. So for our listeners, if you go to www.artpopupshows.com, uh, it is still there. And uh, you can look at some of the uh, wonderful art and our opening night video, episode 100, and see what I look like, and Diane and Constance, and, and uh, look at some great art. We're going to keep that exhibition open until the end of July. Right now, I am here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. And for our listeners, our discussion videos are located at www.talkartpodcast.com. That's talkartpodcast.com. And I decided on the subject for uh, this week was uh, developing your artistic style and how we do that. Is it on purpose? Is it by accident? And especially the younger artists, you know, they really worry about it. And I think uh, as a working artist, if you, uh, as some of these videos re- uh, recommendations uh, confirmed my own feelings, my own thinking about on this subject, that you, uh, you develop your style over time. It just kind of happens. And that's, uh, I'm convinced now after something that I did this last week, which I was talking to Diane and Constance about uh, before we started recording, uh, I never really thought I had a style, but they both said I did. And then this last week, I did something that proved it. We'll get to that a little bit later. Diane, what's your thoughts on uh, developing a style? Do you have an art- artistic style? I think I do. Yeah, I do, I guess. I'm, <laughs> I haven't really set out to develop one, I guess. It just kind of happened from painting so much and you know, doing so much artwork over the years. I, I'm, I guess you're drawn to certain things, and that's kind of where your style starts at and then it just develops as you you know produce more and more work 
<clears throat> yep, that, I, uh, I I agree with that. But uh, Conscience, what about you? Do you think you have a style? Uh, I never really thought about it, um, but I'm sure I do. Uh, I've gone through, you know, I've been painting for a long time, so there's periods when I haven't painted, and then I've gone back to painting and. If our, uh, for our listeners, like I said, go to the uh, www.artpopupshows.com. That's artpopupshows.com. You see our exhibition. And I think you'll see the style. The images that I selected for uh, from Constant was uh, all those little paintings of uh, food, food products, kitchen products. <laughs> you can see that they're all, they were all done by the same artist. Look at Diane. She selected for her uh, participation the images of her uh, ocean view painting, and you can see if you look at them, each one and one up there, you can see it definitely was done by the same. Artist. Me, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm kind of. I guess because I have a variety of subject matters, I don't have all the same subject. You know, whatever. Well, it doesn't all have to be the same subject. You know, I mean, I paint other things too, but I, my mm-hmm. style always comes through no matter what I'm painting. Yeah, it's just it's just the way I work, and that's you know my um, your take on your take. Yeah, on. my viewpoints and stuff. It all come kind of accumulates into the way it looks. So it's, you know, I mean, you can paint anything, and it'll still look like your style. Mm-hmm. Well, I you two have told me before that I have a distinct style. And I never did see it until this last week. And I had been putting off. I'd been invited to uh, submit some artwork for, for an online jury contest. The subject matter was cityscape. And I haven't done that many cityscape. And I decided I wanted to do these in uh, watercolor. It's been a while. It's been four or five months since I've created any watercolor pieces. I've been concentrating on uh, improving my oil painting you know, skills. And um, like I was saying with the story of um, for this exhibition, I decided I was going to submit five pieces, five uh, watercolor illustrations of cityscapes. So I started working, and after I got done with about three of them, I got looking at them, and for the first time ever, to myself, I saw a distinct style. Something that you two have been saying all along that I had, which I never did see. And so I could tell that these were done by me, by the same artist, and they were you know, ra- you know rather uh, uh, unique in that sense. So then I, that's why I just, that's what prompted me to uh, pick as our, uh, for our subject, this week our discussion was how did that come about you know i got thinking about that you know and everything and it wasn't intentional it just kind of developed and it's like the more art i create the more the more it seems to uh, come about i and, think it's the brush mileage yeah like kelly Polson always says you got to put in the brush mileage yeah you do you got to yeah, put the I m- think, brush mileage yeah. in it, it just happens I think initially when you first start painting or start creating work, you're doing a lot of copying or you're taking a lot more information from other painters or other artwork you've seen. And later on, you're not doing that as much. So you kind of put more of your own stamp on things. And so it comes out more as you, as you painted longer. Yeah, that's quite possible. Just like one of the, uh, one of the videos of the, the artists, uh, <laughs> It was a, uh, a interview or a podcast where the artist's the subject was uh, uh, studio work versus plain air. And, of course, I'm, you know, not a, uh, a big plain air guy. You, know, you two are, you know, whatever. And I really like this, this artist's uh, comment. He's very, uh, I guess, a deeper, or, I don't call it, but he's a, uh, Big, a, a, a very uh, famous artist with the uh, Royal Painters of America. He's won several uh, contests. Uh, fairly uh, well known, and he's been an artist his whole life. He's worked, you know, 
worked as a um, commercial artist after art school, and then now he, you know, uh, independent more fine art, you know, a lot of landscape. But uh, in the conversation, uh, he, unlike, I mean, I like Stephen Bauman, but Stephen Bauman was just 100% against photographs. <laughs> he, he rags on you can't do good art. You can't develop your style from photographs. You know? This artist, uh, I like some of his comments because he actually believes that you have to have both in order to grow as, as an artist. And what he says is, is not copying the photograph, but using reference photographs in order to inspire and generate ideals. And then you refine and uh, uh, put your, your own self, your own, con- you know, to help the photographs help you develop your concept. That is what I do, you know, and it really, it hit home with me, you know, and so let me see if I can um, uh, start to share up especially and I'll include these, these uh, uh, for one of my pieces, I'll include them in the video version of the, of the podcast for our listeners. Let me see if I can, without everything crashing on. Okay, do you see, you see that? Yeah, now we see it. Uh-huh. <clears throat> this is the, uh, the artwork titled uh, uh, Venice and I call, I call it a color, you know, colorful Venice, Venice canal. And, uh, it's, you know, a, a watercolor. And then of course, you know, a pen and ink. Now I'm going to show you the reference photo I used to create this. And you will see, it doesn't look really anything like the reference photo, except for maybe the coloring, because it was the coloring that inspired me. Okay. Do you see the reference photo? Do you see the image? Except for the yeah. and a little bit of the placement of this of the items doesn't look anything like like uh, the completed work. It's because whenever I was looking through, you know, this is the royalty free reference photo from the Pixabay provides royalty free uh, photos of all kinds of subjects that artists can use. I was just kind of scanning through, and I was thinking I wanted to do, you know, I had to do cityscape. And I stopped at this one because what attracted my attention was I love the purple coloring in the water. You know, most of the uh, canals, the water's kind of green or kind of blue, like this, those, those purples and reds. And then it's, it's like a, a night scene. You know, it's, uh, it, it's uh, starting to get dark. You can see the light, you know, on the buildings and you know, off to the side. And the reflection, you know, of the of the sky and you know, the water. So that's what I wanted to capture. I wanted to capture the energy of the uh, of, of the sun going down and the, the, uh, the coloring. How you know the with the, with some of the shadows and everything. So now let's go back to my image. Do you think I did that? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I wasn't trying to, to I wasn't trying to, to uh, rep, you know, do a, an, a replicate from the photo, but I, I used all the elements of, uh, you know, of the coloring. Now, I'm going to tell you to something else that uh, after I posted on Facebook, a friend of mine noticed it, and when he first said, said something about it, I thought he was fooling, but then I got looking at it, and he's right. He claims that there is a woman in this image. He said, I should have titled the image the uh, uh, Venus Canal instead of Venice Canal. <laughs> Do you see the, you see the woman, <laughs> woman in there? I'll show yeah. you. There's, no. a, there's a woman in two places. <clears throat> the first place that I saw, I thought he was talking about. I'm going to see if I can expand. The first place that I saw was right there. You see that right there? That looks almost like a, uh, for our listeners, I'm, I'm pointing near the bottom of the image. It looks like a, a classical face, you know, face of a woman. The, the, the nose and, you know, the, the eyes. And, okay. That's the first one that I noticed. But my friend says, 
And our, our artist friend, Kali, also agreed with him. It looks like a woman, the entire canal looks like a woman laying down in a bath. Mm-hmm. Oh, you saw that, Diane? Really? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that first. <laughs> <laughs> My friend, this is not... I don't see it. No. <laughs> I don't see it. <laughs> but, you know, when they made those pictures that you were able to see stuff in, I couldn't see those stuff in it. <laughs> so I don't see stuff like that. Well, I thought he was crazy, but then when I got looking at it, <laughs> oh my God, it's true. <clears throat> so this is not intentional. I mean, it just kind of, you know, happened. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah. so, you know, this is uh, for future collectors, you know, this is like, a, you know, <laughs> quite subliminal art in his artwork. Yeah. <laughs> and I think now some of them, some of my uh, uh, followers, the more artwork I post, I think they're going to be more enthusiastically looking for yeah. Thing, looking for things in there. Yeah. But uh, what this, this guy was talking about, I fully agree with. You know, I says, yeah, I paint some photographs, but sometimes I may use two or three photographs, and I just use it for just for reference, just to see what a bottle looks like or what a boat looks like or whatever. But then I, I add my own own uh, uh, artist, I take my own artistic license, you know, and, and I do like what Stephen Bauma says, you know, he says, you have to look, you have to see, and then see again, you know, and mm-hmm. maybe that, and for me, that's when it, this last week it kind of hit me, I said, yeah, right, I, you, you crossed another threshold, I've, uh, I've grown another, another step, yeah. Um, Diane, you got any examples of that where you felt like you've uh, you crossed the threshold or crossed the threshold? <laughs> um, I don't know. I can't think of that. something right off the top of my head like that. Um, now I was thinking about the, using the photos. I never used photos until maybe maybe five six years ago. I always painted from life, so. It was it was different trying to work from a photograph because I couldn't see the amount of colors and stuff that you see when you're out there. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but um, I think it's really important. I think part of that is it's I think it's important to take your own photographs because that means you've been in that place and experienced the atmosphere or the you know the the um, ambiance or whatever you want to call it of that place especially if you're doing like a landscape um and i I think you can be reminded of a lot of that from your photographs which is something you can't get if you haven't been there and haven't taken that photograph i agree Um, i mean i don't usually use them in like to copy from i usually use them to remind me of what I felt and saw when I was there. Yeah. So. That, that, that is exactly where like I... When you start a painting and you get most of it done and then you might need to finish it up or something when you get home, it's, good. it's nice to take a photograph. You know, if things change drastically while you're trying to finish up or something. Yeah, well, the light changes so fast, especially out in the landscape. The light changes so fast. You have to, when you start a painting outside, you have to remember where, you know, what it was that that drew you to that spot. Like, where, was it the shadows? Was it the way the light was on something? You have to remember that so as you're working on the painting, because it'll change within Yeah, and then you try to go back the next day, and (laughs) it's cloudy or something, or it's raining, (laughs) or, you know, some people say, well, you can always go back the next day. Yeah, but it's not going to be the same. <laughs> it's no, it's never different. the same. Never exactly the same. Exactly. And that, that's one of the, uh, uh, what you want to call it, your features or troubles or, or benefits. Yeah. mind how you look at it. But uh, I've got to get the SS Brosnan set up to go landscape painting. <laughs> 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 we keep using it like it's a pickup truck. And, oh, so I'm not happy. <laughs> but um, earlier, uh, Diane, when you said, you know, the photographs of Jogamir, 
uh, that's what they do for me. Uh, I can't, I can't create art that I haven't connected with. Like I can do quite a bit of art, of like over in Italy, scenes from Italy. I can do cityscapes because I lived in Naples, Italy for 16 years. In the you know it's a big bustling city, and it's like a mini version of New York City. I've never lived in New York City, but all the photographs I've ever seen in New York City, very much like Naples. You know, I've been to Rome several times, and so. I can identify. I've never been to Venice, but I've been close to Venice. I've been to, there's a lot of people only think about, uh, you know, when they think canals, they think of Venice. Well, there's other cities in Italy that have canals. <laughs> you want to have some fun? Drive an 18 wheeler through New York City. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> um, I, you know, when I'm searching for, you know, the, these photographs, like I said, it's not so much the, as the, the copy them, but they do uh, to, to jog them. And, yes, I have also lots of photographs. My daughters, you know, provide me for you know, photographs I used to reference. Them, so that uh, jogs memory. Living here in Oklahoma, I've had so many different people say, why don't you do some Western painting? I can't because I wasn't born and raised in Oklahoma. I have nothing to identify with Oklahoma. What? Well, and you're not a landscape painter, really. What I mean, you are, but you're not, you know. But if you're not drawn to Western stuff, I mean. Well, no, I love, I like Western stuff. I wish I yeah. could. Yeah. But. I mean, I've, when I was living in Lillian, I did so many beach scenes because I used to go to the beach all the time and paint. And on, in the Gulf, I did lots of beautiful beach paintings. The sand there was like white. Sugar. <laughs> and yeah. those were really pretty but now I'm up here so I'm trying to figure out you know what kind of paintings to do I've done a couple of western style you know paintings but they were I want to do cow paintings <laughs> <laughs> I just haven't done it yet it's so hot <laughs> but it's very uh, uh, you know it, it it's very hard for me unless I have some kind of a um, personal type uh, connection and mm -hmm. that's what so it, it bothers me for some, you know, art teachers or whatever, and they criticize, oh, you can't worry, you can't develop your style from photographs. Well, I think I'm, I'm evidence that you can. I've done it. <laughs> and I know there's a, and that, that, that other artist in that video there, that he talks about that. Uh, he's one too. He, but he's used a combination of playing there, and he says, his, his focus was that you can do so much more in a studio. You can, you can correct, you can correct. And and you can experiment as to where out in plain air you can't. Right there. Yeah, but your time is so limited outside. It you is. You only make but... indications of things, and you can't. You don't have the time to like really mix to the correct color. <clears throat> and um, excuse me. You have to learn all kinds so you... of, you know, and you know. If you yeah, see, I mean, it takes get a out different there kind of painting. Up. Yeah, if you get up out there really early and get everything set up and paint on smaller paintings then you can do as everything is changing then you can really knock some out early and then you catch the light as it's changing and then do another the smaller ones uh, especially sun sunrises are really pretty I like sunrises and sunsets and do them or then you know you can because there's lots of shadows that you can get with the trees and stuff that make really pretty landscape paintings, you know. Yeah, but the, the the light in the early morning and late, like for sunsets, that changes so fast. And you here have be, you have to be ready. Yeah, <laughs> but really you gotta be set there. up when it starts to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, be ready so that when the sun starts starts because it happens so quick, it's so fleeting. But, yeah. you know, you, if you get someplace where you know where <laughs> all of the lines are for everything, and then when it starts to happen, just start painting really quick. Get your paint all set up. Everything's all set up. All you got to do is start willing the paintbrush. <laughs> but I do believe that it's not it, – it, in developing an artist's uh, style, it's not one way or the other. I think it's a combination. combination of plain air, a combination of life, uh, working from life and working from studio in studio and working with, you know, with photographs. 
I think of the photograph as, as a uh, as an asset, as a tool, as another another tool, just like the computer. Yeah, it is. Because like, yeah, well, I think we're, we're lucky on, to have that tool. I think all those things play into your style. So mm-hmm. depending on what you use and how you use it, would you know would make your style one way versus another way. Mm-hmm. You know, it all changes that. So yeah, absolutely, just like I, uh, the uh, a lot of these younger artists that are working in the. Um, uh, as illustrators working in the in the gaming and the uh, comic book, you know, if you look at enough of their art, it all looks almost the same. You can tell they mm-hmm. look at, they study each other, you know, and, and it's, it's, there's there's very few that are very distinct, you know, and, and uh, so uh, and well for them it's like developing characters that they write stories about. The, you're talking about the uh, the anime. The anime and then comic books and all, mm-hmm. yeah, and, and quite yeah, there's certain styles that kind of mm-hmm. are more prevalent, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, uh, quite a bit of it is electronic, you know, they uh, use it, you know, with yeah, computer, digital computer graphics, yeah, I still have to develop the characters though and write the stories about them, but I'm talking about the actual art, the actual art, yes, yeah, it's, it's the artwork, yeah, enough of them. It all looks almost the same, you know. There, well, there's only a few of the real, real uh, popular ones that have uh, broke out and have, uh, you know, uh, developed their, you know, they become their their own. Go to a comic book store and you'll figure it out. There's lots of them. <laughs> unique, unique style. So, uh, uh, the uh, a lot of the uh, modern art and the, you know the abstract art. When you look at enough of it. It all almost looks the same, at least to me. Yeah. The only people that I see that are unique, that I identify as styles, is our plain air, traditional, uh, representational artists. They are the only ones that I can look at different representation artists that I can identify unique and different styles. I look at modern art, abstract, contemporary art, and I see it all blurs together. You know, here I am once again knocking modern art, but hey, <laughs> he's stepping on my toes. He is. <laughs> I can't. I love, I well, love I, abstract art, and that's art. part of your style. Like you know, a lot of you're you're drawn to certain things over mm-hmm. other things, and that that all plays into your style too. Yeah. So, I love abstract art. So I, mean, I, I I like lots of different kinds of art, but I only like certain aspects of it. Usually, <laughs> you know, it's like, but I'm yeah. I'm geared towards the realistic stuff, but and um, I can appreciate the other work. We're so fortunate that uh, we have uh, you know, tools, you know, with the computers, graphic programs, like something of which I do uh, quite often. Is at a certain point when I'm working on the piece, I'll go ahead and I'll take a photograph of it, and then I'll load it in my computer, and then I'll turn it to black and white so I can check my values. See if my values. See if I need to make this a little bit darker or a little bit lighter. You know, and that has. Well, I've got an app on your phone for that now. So when you're out playing your painting, you can yeah. check right. that while you're painting. <laughs> I don't have an iPhone. Okay. <laughs> well, you don't have to have an iPhone. <laughs> you you know, computer. There's on. probably an app. There's probably an app for Androids. That you can yeah, let you do sure. that. Galaxies or whatever those apps. Yeah. There's an app for that. <laughs> But I use you know computer you know graphic programs and but that's uh you know and that's a tool that didn't exist you know back with the Mac. so we're still employing you know well what they did was they had colored glass so when you look like a lot of people use red uh, glass yeah red glass they, have, yeah, they even have glasses that are made with the red lenses if mm-hmm. you look at I've got that, that it'll, a little, it'll give you the tonal little you know. card thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they used things like that back, you know, hundreds of years ago. It's just a different format than what we have today. Yeah. Our listeners, our younger artists are starting, you know, start beginning artists. Uh, don't worry about the style. Just keep on working. Keep on creating art, and your style will develop before you. It will you- materialize. <laughs> materialize, exactly. It will develop. And, and like you, you might not realize it. 
you might be, need to be pointed out by other people looking at your work. You might not see it yourself. Exactly. <laughs> you may already have a distinct style now. And until enough people point it out to you, you won't, you won't actually see it. You know, but when you do, when you do recognize it, it's such a wonderful feeling. It's what I call, you know, artist growth. Another step in my artist growth. My, uh, you know, I've crossed the earth. So with that, let's um, conclude this podcast, this episode of the Artist Friends Podcast, episode one hundred and one. You believe it? <laughs> one hundred and one. Yeah. For June the fourteenth. 2021 and we have been talking about artist style and developing an artist style with my two best artist friends diane Hunt and constance bronson and i'm going to say good night to diane and good night to constance good night clyde good night constance good night everyone good night clyde good night diane good night everybody i'll come back again thank you folks for so much for listening and uh as always however you hear this podcast Give us a thumbs up. All right. Our star rating. Bye. Until next time. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.com dianehuntstudio.com Constance Bronson at www.edsy.com forward slash shop forward slash c-b-r-o-s-n-a-n-s Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at signmystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.